Hey guys, how you going? Ball here. Infinity game. It's combined army against Hakaslam, led by Shishkin up against Tariq. And we are going to be playing on the ITS-9 mission, looting and sabotaging. Well, here's a look at the battlefield. And right away, let's just have a talk about um, the layout of this mission. So get the head out of the way. There we are. So what we're doing is we're looking at the battlefield from my deployment zone. I have won the role uh, for initiative and I've decided to take the first turn. So my opponent has picked the table side that he prefers and I have to deploy first. Now in this matchup against Hakaslam, I prefer going first. This is a scenario where you don't necessarily have to go second to win, as we'll talk about a bit more throughout the bat rep. But let's just have a look at it. So this is your 4x4 table. Here we, get, here we are here with my um, uh, AC2 or whatever it's called, Advanced Communications Station thingy majiggy, and there's my opponent's one. So in this mission, you have to destroy your opponent's objective, the one on their side of the table, but you can only do it in close combat, and your close combat trooper has to use an anti-material weapon. So decharges are okay, a double action close combat weapon is okay, a tag counts as having anti-material uh, fists. So those are the ways to do it. Now, um, there are some problems here. To get into close combat with a thing, obviously you've got to ignore all of the people shooting at you from around. So if you put smoke down, that's a better way of doing it. Or if you move over as a, as a camo marker, you can do it. But the objective has massive BTS and armor values. So yeah, it's, um, it's quite, it could be quite difficult to, uh, to smash it up. The other thing I want to say is that Hakaslam uh, are already a very good faction and uh, partly because of Ghazi Mutiwa, the jammers. But they are even better in this particular scenario because they can keep uh, Ghazi Mutiwa out of line of sight, out of, in total cover, and still use their jammers to uh, stop you from actually coming in and isolating you just as you finally got your trooper over to the objective. So that's, it's quite a good scenario for them. Um, now, many games, I believe, are probably going to be tiebreakers. You're going to be in a situation where neither player is able to attack well enough to kill the, uh, the, the thing. So there's also a panoply there, and a panoply right behind this building here, and if you uh, collect things with more troopers than your opponent does, then you get an extra point, which could be a tie-breaking point, so that's quite important, but a specialist can actually um, go for the panoply and exchange what they picked up for decharges. Now, we weren't really sure of the ruling here, and we couldn't be bothered checking out the rules for them, so maybe you guys can post us a reply. I'm sure you guys, you guys love posting replies if it's correcting me, so let's have a look. Um, looting and sabotaging is page 25. So what we weren't sure of is whether the specialist that passes the whip check to take something from the panoply can then automatically exchange what they get for a decharges, or whether they have to pass a further whip check. If we look at the uh, the wording here, I'll just try and get it on the screen a bit more effectively. So, panoplies. By succeeding in a whip roll, a trooper can make any roll on the booty chart. That's fine. And they can't do it again after they've got something. So you have to use multiple troopers to, you know, increase your, your stats, your, your number of successes. Um, if you pass, then you can make a roll. Um... But then further to that, note that, you know, the first bullet point is allows the trooper to use the logistics traits. So it's, then it's got the sub points. And then it's got another uh, point over here, which is not one of the sub points. By succeeding at a whip roll, the specialist troops, plural, <laughs> great grammar guys, can replace the result of the booty chart roll with decharges. So does that mean that um, by passing your initial whip roll, you get something from the table but as part of that package, you are allowed to swap it if you're a specialist? Or does it mean that by succeeding at a further whip roll, you can replace the result? Weren't really entirely sure. We decided to um, take the interpretation that um, you only have to make one whip roll. And after you've done that, if you are a specialist, you get to swap what you picked up for decharges. It just seems that um, most of the time you see rules like this, it refers to, you know, a further whip roll or um, something like that, if you need to do anything further than that. So interesting, interesting stuff. Okay, um, my army list, just real quick. Um, Shishkin, 
So she's fast. Uh, she uh, is good at getting to the objective while retaining cover because of her nano screen. She's amazing in close combat, uh, so she hits pretty hard with her double action close combat weapon, but she's got decharges naturally as well. So if she makes it into close combat with the objective, then she should be able to smash it. Also, she's a good data tracker because she starts in your deployment zone, is not a marker or anything like that. Speculo Killer. Um, this cannot be used to attack the objective because a monofilament weapon is not anti-material, but she can throw the smoke next to the objective for me to move in there. Uh, she can also take out, hopefully, a Jandazan. Now the two Krakot Renegades are also great in this mission because they've both got double action close combat weapons on the profile that you normally want to go for, the submachine gun. Uh, and the thing about this is, technically, unless I'm missing something, you should be allowed to use Berserk, right? So that means that you get a plus six to your roll, a much greater chance of hitting it with a crit. If you do not crit, well, it has to beat your physical 13 with armor eight, so you might not even get any damage through. Uh, Noctophil Lieutenant, just because I didn't really have any other good Lieutenant options and it needs to be safe against Haka Slums, you know, uh, Fee Days and so forth. Q Drone, because I don't have any other HMGs and it's a good synergy with the uh, normal hacking. Mark Rep Tracker, um, didn't take these guys for a while. They're back on my list, a multi sniper this, this time, mostly just because I'm going to be using it as an ARO piece against a Fee Day that might drop smoke right in front of my objective and then start hacking it, uh, start whacking it, I should say. Other than that, Ikadron, Statrats, AR Drone, Imitrons, normal sort of stuff. Uh, more hacker because he's cheaper a single predator because i could afford him and the shrouded with um with the mine layer now this is more relevant than taking a specialist shrouded in this particular mission i believe because i've got other things to be objected with but mine layer allows me to put a mine next to my very crucial objective to try and protect it right all right so um let's go back to the game from left to right, um, he has got a FIDE deployed on the building about to attack me, but I've got my lieutenant in camo marker mode, uh, Morat Hacker here, there's a uh, Krakot here and here, they've both rolled up super jump, which is amazing, Imitron lands um, correctly, so does this one, we've got the shrouded um, mine layer there, but there's the mine uh, within 8 inches of him next to my objective, Q drone back here, Ikadron back here, another Ikadron. Uh, the Mark Rep sniper is facing this way, just so that she can actually cover this long line and um, hopefully take out anything that comes in here onto smoke. Shishkin is, is right there. Uh, R drone, Datrat, Sai, and uh, can't even remember what's back there. All right. Oh, yeah, if you look at my right hand side, it's actually a Pretter. So, yeah, that's that's what that shows. So, R drone and Pretter right on the, on the far corner. You can see a picture of the middle zone here where, again, that mine is, is placed so as to be a little bit shielded from uh, people discovering it straight away. But as soon as you come close here, you get blown up. And this prevents a FIDE also from uh, being deployed there and attacking me straight away. It, yes, it gets one attack, but then he takes a mine to the face. And, okay, so what we've got is the FIDE deploying here. A good place to deploy him. Even though he doesn't have first turn, I'm going to have to deal with him. And um, if I don't, he's going to stand up and actually kill that hacker quite effectively. Okay, on his side of the table, Tariq with the Spitfire, uh, Barid, Killer Hacker. We've got a, a bot of some kind, Ghazi Motiwa, and of course the little sniper, Gulam Sniper. Um, through the middle central part of his zone, there's a Krakot uh, with plus one armor, I believe, rolled up. A Nafatun here, another Ghazi, Panzerfaust deployment zone guy, um, Dalami, another Ga a Ghazi there. His Jansban's here, and I've deployed my Speculo there because I don't have to make a roll for it. And the idea is that I can just poke around the corner of that staircase and blast him with a shotgun, possibly hitting the Staturatze here, or not Staturatze, uh, Gazi Motiwa, or I can walk into close combat and use monofilament. And this model here, um, this model actually belongs to me. I've just lent it to my opponent for this game while I'm painting it up. It's the Penth Penthesilia bootleg model. I don't really like Penthesilia. Um, so he's using it as uh, Zulika, the, uh, the bike sister. When I play my version of her, I'm going to use the Zamira version. Just FYI. So here she is there. There's Zulika. We've got a Lasik sniper just covering a very thin line across his deployment zone along there. And uh, his lieutenant, Nafatun, just tucked away. Cool. Uh, so my Q drone is one of the first things to activate. You can't see it, but in the background there's a Ghazi there. And there's also a Dalami uh, Panzerfaust, which we were just looking at. And the Q drone uh, blasts them with its uh, HMG after receiving the buff and uh, picks off a couple of guys straight away. Then the Speculo, making the decision here to come around the corner a little bit, 
blast the boarding shotgun at the, the, the Jan Bazam. So I think that uh, in hindsight, uh, this is a mistake. By the way, what happens here is that the uh, Speculo fires at him, makes him unconscious, gets jammed, and um, also gets shot by the Lasique, so dies. No, not the Lasique. Gets shot by a pistol, I think, from, um, from, from Zuliko or something like that. The annoying thing, though, is that the Jambazan can regenerate. So I think, knowing that I was just going to be so crippled by everything attacking me as soon as I went over there, it would have been a smarter move to go and use monofilament weapon to prevent any chance of a, a regen. Um, assuming he failed the armor save, uh, and that I failed the crit, that is. So, uh, there's the positioning. You've got the bike shooting up, um, just barely getting line of sight there, and uh, gets me. Jambazan gets taken up by the shotgun, and unfortunately I couldn't creep around far enough to actually hit the, the Ghazi in the back either. So there we go, isolated and unconscious, and what this means is that I can't use my auto med kit because this model does not generate in a regular order because it's dead, and I can't spend orders from the group to regen it because it's isolated, so there you go. Shishkin now moving out um, with not that many orders left because I've used some on the Q drone, some on the uh, on the Specula already, and a minus two from the command dog and he spends. But um, shooting over with the uh, Red Fury and eliminating uh, people over that side of the table. And then just getting to a bit of a better position. Um, there's some Dacharazzi Smokey. You can see his little hand at the bottom left. Um, just covering for the pressure to get out further into the table. Uh, because I've realized I just have to do this, um, the Krakot has used Super Jump to jump up here, then move around to discover the Fide and eliminate him with a submachine gun. Um, actually using the double chest mine in, the, in a bit of a exchange process. And then Shishkin just hiding out behind here. She is able to cut around beside the box and take out his Ghulam Sniper, but this does mean that she ends the turn um, halfway up the table, which is not really ideal. Um, with Group 2's orders, since I've got a, um, a Shrouded in that group, just expanding a mine here and here, and this one has already been placed by Mine Layer. One thing I realized later on is that um, Mine Layer counts as expanding some of your mines, and I'd forgotten about that uh, until this game. So um, by putting two, two fresh mines down, I'm out of mines altogether and going back into Camo Market State with one of those orders. Okay, so my opponent moving out with um, Impetuous Moves, uh, chugging down the smoke with the... the uh, our super friends and then on the other side of the battlefield doing the same sort of thing um, you can see where Shishkin is behind this blue box uh, as he's just coming around uh, throwing the smoke down so uh, what this allows us to do and I'm not too sure if I pointed it out by the way my opponent has a regular camo marker in the middle of the table in the shadows here but with smoke here and here um, Zulik is able to drive her bike through the smoke grenades towards Shishkin, and this is the idea. Note that um, the nano screen is uh, flammable, so um, one of the ideas here is to go after Shishkin with potentially the flamethrowers. So uh, Zulika moves out, um, Shishkin goes for the dodge, gets a crit 15 with the dodge, and uh, with the breaker pistols blasting out, also gets a crit, so nothing happens. Um, Jambazan, fortunately for my opponent, uh, regenerates successfully. Wouldn't have been able to do that had I used the monofilament sword successfully, but I, sh I opted for the shotgun, so the Jambazan is now back at the cost of just one order, which is kind of irritating. So Jambazan getting up here, and again you can see Shushkin uh, blurry in the background, but there's now a smoke template. Well, the, the photo doesn't show it very well, but um, firing through here, the smoke is more like a, a, a cylinder, so it does actually uh, block the line of sight. And Janzaban fires at Shishkin, puts her into NWI, and she guts us back behind the blue box. So there she is there. Now, um, Tadarik realizes that if he steps around the corner here, because Shishkin is now prone, the car is actually covering quite a lot of, a lot of, of height. So Tadarik um, cannot shoot her here unless he shoot, uh, super jumps up in this direction. He can't super jump up over the wall because he has to go vertically, so he'd have to come out and get a bit of an angle to, to, to leapfrog over it. Now, jumping up in the air means that Shishkin shoots him and hits him on 18s, but hey, it's Tariq. He's got this awesome new rule called Fatality. You might have heard of it. And ends up just um, having a go at it. We've held him in, in the air for this photo just so you can see what he's actually doing cinematic style and uh, does manage to kill um, Shishkin with a crit, sadly. So there you go. Jambazan moving for, for the field and, um, and going prone just to safeguard himself. 
Tariq um, running around now and just getting to a better position, jumping up on top of the building this time and going prone. There you go. And uh, yeah, Ghazi is just moving in behind boxes, getting ready for the next turn. So in my turn, I didn't really uh, didn't really feel like restraining my Preta, so I decided to run him in front of the line of fire of the Lasik, hoping to dodge him with Blissiska 14. Uh, didn't win the face-to-face -face roll, so the viral sniper rifle destroys the Preta, sadly. We've got a Krakot, though, coming forward with uh, Impetuous, and the plan is to try and go around through to here and get to his objective and attack it with a with double-action close combat weapon. To do that, though, I'm going to need to throw the smoke grenades down with the... Um, the Dacharazzo, who's following closely behind. Morats, luckily, are immune to jammers because of their Morat rule. So this might be a bit of a, a, a goer. So here, here we are here. So in the aforementioned photo, we've got the objective up here. Krakot has just come into total cover, and the Dacharazzo can now move through and start lobbing down smoke grenades, if you guys see what I'm thinking. To do this, I'm using a lot of coordinated orders to move guys through, and as the Dacharatsa and the Krakot are coordinating their way forward, the Q drone is also moving its way around, uh, hopefully getting to a point where it can blast Zulika. My opponent is pointing to the the battle, the, 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 the mat right now, just telling me where he's throwing Zulika's um, smoke grenade, and infuriating, infuriatingly, Zulika manages to get a smoke grenade down successfully, or at least the Ghazi does, whichever one I was aiming at. So, yeah, annoyingly, um, Drone has to just keep on coming around just to a better position. Um, I decided to move out the Shrouded to move around here and place a mine next to Zalika and the Camo Marcus, because I thought that would be really clever, because as soon as they ARO, then they get blasted. But then my opponent reminded me that I'd run out of mines because I was a little bit too trigger-happy earlier in the game, so that is another mistake. Um, okay, so we've got the Datrides into position, getting the smoke grenades down, so... Once we get to this point here, the Krakot, because it's it's speed 6-4, thanks to the metachemistry for this game, is going to be able to walk directly from there to the objective. But before I did so, I wanted to get the Dacharatsa in here and use an intuitive attack to uh, take these guys out if possible. Intuitive attack means that when you make the roll to, dis to do it, like whip, whip check, it becomes a face-to-face -face roll, so it's even more powerful than the normal uh, chain rifle. Sadly, though... Um, he only takes one wound with Zalika and the camera marker dodges successfully. It turned out to be a, um, uh, what are those guys called? The Alhawa Assault Hacker. So finally, trying to get some points on the board. Very, very important for this game not to be a tiebreaker. So the crack up moves out, uh, berserks the objective. So a 13 plus would give me a crit. Rolled less than that. So d double action means he makes two saves trying to beat a 13 and uh, pass them both, and then the Datrizer gets killed. So, very annoying, a little bit unlucky to do no damage whatsoever, but hey, that's life, it's a game of dice sometimes. More at Hacker in Group 2, using some of the orders just to move further forward, because um, having pretty much lost all of my uh, anti-material close combat weapons, my only real hope for going over there and hitting the objective is for the More at Hacker to take um, some decharges out of the panoply and maybe move over there later in the game. Anyway, he's just slinking in behind the stairs. We've got the lieutenant moving up, the lieutenant order behind this building as well, just to prep for later. Okay, so my opponent moving out, um, not quite around the corner to see the Dacharatsa with his uh, Gazi Motiwa. The other one, planting some smoke down here. My Q drone has relocated behind this box here, so my Q drone, you can just barely see him sticking out behind the corner. Um, so cleverly, the, the, the uh, Gazi comes around. Just the bottom stairs, not too far further around, and successfully throws the smoke there to prevent him getting blasted later. So you can see a better picture of what's going on here. As the uh, the guys he moves over here, he's going to be able to jam me, but at this point, it doesn't really matter whether this model is isolated or not. So not too worried about that. Um, quite annoyingly, though, he does eventually manage to jammer this model, which was kind of annoying, you know? Didn't, um, didn't have much of a chance. By the way, his HVT is here, so if he doesn't destroy this model by the end of the game, that is my opportunity to pick up a classified, which might also be useful for the whole tie-breaking situation. All right, so Tariq uh, now jumping down from the building, getting in, getting into some little shootouts with, uh, we've got uh, Datrat, so kills him. There's a couple of Flash Pulse Ikadrons further in the, further afield, so kills one of them as well. Just going um, going smoothly, stays out of line of sight of the uh, the mine, of course, and raids the panoply, and what do you know, Tariq gets an HMG. Kind of annoying, because Fatality Level 2 makes it a damage 16 HMG, which he's critting on, either on a 1 or the natural crit roll, so things are getting a bit out of hand here. Tariq also moving forward, picking off, I think, an Imitron... 
Um, he's picked up the, uh, yeah, he gets rid of the Ikadron in the far field, and later on he'll be able to take this guy out as well. So severely reducing the number of regular orders that I'm going to have, planting himself behind this building over here and eventually going into um, a suppression fire. Note that these camo markers here are mines as well. Or at least one of them is that that guy is not a mine, but he's choosing not to reveal himself at this point. Uh, Jambazan going in for a classified, so putting me a bit behind on that. Extreme Prejudice on my convenient Specular Killer just hanging here to provide a corpse. How about that? Oh yeah, so what happened here is that the Q drone moved out to shoot him and then moved back again um, in my final turn. And he's isolated here, does not manage to kill the Ghazi. Just leaves in there and under a smoke grenade, so that's uh, quite quite painful. Lieutenant comes around the corner, goes for the panoply, picks up a flash pulse. We've got, I've got a, I mean, my only chance of winning really is to prevent him from doing any damage to my objective, taking more stuff from the panoplies by the end of this turn, and um, keeping the Q drone alive to, to take his HVT. That's my only path to victory at this point, so things are looking pretty bad. Um, the shrouded moving across here and also picking up something from the panoply, I think ODD, so in. Increases him from camo to ODD. I'll take it. Take whatever I can. Then, of course, in his turn, moves forward, um, sadly, with a Ghazi that is still left alive. Um, and I'm having to dodge chain rifles and so forth. Quite painful. Um, understandably, uh, takes a wound, keeps on coming. And um, because I need the Q-Drone to survive, he decides to move over and destroys the Q-Drone successfully. Can't even dodge the chain rifles, so that's quite painful. His own Krakot moving out now. Not getting a lot done, but um, getting his body onto the field. There's the Q drone there, just getting smashed up by the Ghazi, so a little bit unlucky there. Um, hit one of his other Ghazis moves forward to clear the minefield, to let Tariq through. So this mine goes off on the Ghazi and blows him up. Uh, so yep, as expected. And then Tariq, of course, all he needs to do is move around the side here. He's going to easily be able to gun down this Mark Trip. He's been waiting all game to do really very little. Um, he's got his Nafatun Lieutenant, which can stand up, not really needing a Lieutenant anymore, so he stands up to try and get rid of uh, these guys over here, and I think succeeds in killing the Shrouded, or something like that. Um, things were just really getting out of the hand at this point, and uh, Ghazi moving in close combat with the Noctifer, um, not man managing to kill him with a knife, but now this model can't even ARO against Tariq. So Tariq destroying the Mark Rep, um, unsurprisingly, and then... Moves into combat with my objective, the mine goes off, he's got two wounds, doesn't really care, and proceeds to lay waste to the objective. So, yeah, it turned into a bit of a snowball, snowball at the end, um, lost quite badly because he's got his classified, he's got more from the panoplies um, than I did. No, he, actually, I had more from the panoplies, but he got his classified, he's completely destroyed my objective, and he's kept his alive, and Tariq was the data tracker as well, so a, quite a brutal bashing by the end of it from Tariq and the Hakaslam, but my, my opponent played really well, so kudos to him. Um, let's talk about my mistakes, because I can fix them and do better next time. I think my decision to deploy the Speculo there and try and take out the Jambasan, if it, if I was going so all in on that, I should have tried with a mono monofilament weapon and just taken the hit, because if I'd killed the Janzaban, that Janzaban, minus one order for the rest of the game, and Shishkin may have survived his first onslaught, right? So there's that. Second mistake I felt that I made was the Shrouded expending all mines straight away. If I'd kept one, I could have moved the Shrouded around, placed a mine next to Zulika and the um, the Alhawa. So if they arrowed against the chain rifle going off in their faces, they'd have taken a mine as well, which could have been a bit of fun. Third mistake I felt like I made is that in my first turn, I sort of split my effort between Shishkin and the Speculo and the, uh, what's them to call it, the Krakot going after the Fide. I should have just kept Shishkin back a bit. I shouldn't have been greedy to try and kill three models. I should have just killed one, and then pulled her back, and just kept her, uh, kept her behind total cover for a while. That way, when it gets to my second turn, I'm not at the penalty of minus two orders from the command token, and I can really go on a maximum sort of Rambo run with Shishkin and get a lot of damage done, maybe even going into base-to-base -base with the objective by the end of it. So yeah, there was that. Um, I also felt I made the mistake of putting the mark rip where I did. I was just worried about a Fide being there, but the thing is, I was going first, so there's no need to deploy it there. What I should have done is deploy the mark rip to the left on the building, um, if we just look at the initial picture again. If I had... Um, Oh, let me get this out of the way. 
if I had not put the marker up there but put it here instead, at this location, well, that would have meant, if I could just get my video capture device, that would have meant that I had been able to take care of this long line there, and the marker app still would have been able to see across there. So later in the game, the marker app stands up, and my opponent has to shoot it first to get rid of it. So if the Speculo had been able to kill the Janbazan, that marker app would have been a great position. There would have been very few things that could have shot it down apart from Tariq, but he would have been a long, long way away. So yeah, um, I could have played a lot better that game. But still a good game, and I like the mission. I think that it wasn't really my fault that I didn't do very well on this particular mission. Um, I'd happily play it again. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, by the way. Um, we'll have some more Infinity soon, and maybe some more list building as well.